Hello everyone, Dr. Naveen here from UPSC Medico. See, the biggest problem with regards to any optional exam in the end days is our brain is already very tired with the general studies preparation, right? A good thing is that once the GS exams are over, you have around seven days, right? Uh, if you exclude the language exam which comes in between. From Monday to next Sunday, you have six days okay if you exclude the end day of the exam on the Sunday if you take rest you have six days to revise just before going for your final exam on the next Sunday and this six days like I do get with my last four years of experience what I observed is students they struggle to revise this humongous medical science optional right this is not this, this is a relative statement because because there are multiple subjects and also most of them are factual memory based unless and until you get proper support or a study partner it is difficult to revise on a faster pace and this is a common problem and uh, this year i want to address this issue because if you revise properly in these four to five or six days it will definitely improve your final scores like no matter what you have done so far if you do a proper revision just before the final go for a factual exam or a memory based optional like medical science i personally believe this is gonna get you that plus 20 marks extra to push you into 300 zone so keeping the target in mind what i have done is i have designed a schedule so that we can do or we can revise together through live zoom okay this will be around six hours per day and daily we'll do six hours per day for four days so that in 24 hours let's try to finish medical science optional revision so when i say revision i'm not going to do 100 percent subject revision because we can't go from page one to page 100 of anatomy right it is humanly not possible to do in detail revision or reading of the notes what we will do uh, here is there are some specific points i'll talk about that but what we'll do is we'll do revise in an integrated most high yield fashion in a subject wise fashion again okay we'll pick up a subject we'll pick topmost topics we'll try to predict what is going to happen so let me first orient you towards the course what we are going to do once you enroll into the course okay you will be added to a separate group wherein we'll post the zoom link to attend the zoom session and in the zoom session you have a three hour zoom session in the morning and three hour zoom session in the afternoon the timings are 10 a.m to 1 p.m we have a gap or a break of two hours for lunch and all for rest then come back between 3 to 6 p.m for three more hours so from monday to thursday on four days we'll start with medical subjects first micropath we integrate with infectious diseases then we go to general medicine similarly from physiology pharma we go to peds derma and psychiatry so that the most medicine part is done then slowly with biochemistry and fmt we jump into surgical aspects of obg and also little bit of preventive aspect because though the subjects are relatively uh, uh, the syllabus part is big because the weightage is low they come in paper to right section b so relatively you hardly get four psm questions and four obg questions so keeping that in mind i want to club these two subjects together to finish in three hours and uh, again anatomy and general surgery i'm giving more weightage because this is the area where the students struggle more anatomical and surgical syllabus is also relatively uh, comparatively syllabus is huge uh, in relation to the other subjects and also these are factual based that's why i want you to remind them as close to the exam as possible so these are all zoom classes so i thought of not recording these sessions for multiple reasons one thing is if i say recordings students will never attend live sessions okay so the main intention or purpose is you and me sitting together and discussing subject and interacting and also when i force you to sit for three hours you will sit otherwise if i give you a recordings recordings the percentage chances of you finishing all the recordings is less than 10 percent okay so that's the reason let's do it live but but i have like almost uh, till date uh, the time i am recording this uh, lecture already 30 plus students have joined the course i have a cap or a limitation of 100 students in zoom because in premium subscription you are allowed to stream only for 100 students okay if you haven't enrolled so far do it as soon as you can because uh, the enrollment will close once i reach a cutoff of 100 students now 
नेकन नेक्स्ट थिंग इज देर विल बी सम टेक्निकल ग्लिचेस राइट मे बी इंटरनेट डिसकनेक्टिविटी एट यूर एंड आर माई एंड राइट देर कुड बी सम एमरजेंसी आफ्टर एनरोलमेंट वॉट एम ट्राइंग टू डू इज स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम मंडे टिल द डे ऑफ द एग्जाम दैट इज संडे आई विल गिव यू एक्सेस टू द रिकॉर्डिंग्स ओके आई डी गिव यू एक्सेस टू द रिकॉर्डिंग्स बट माई रिक्वेस्ट इज डोंट डोंट एवर डिपेंड अपॉन ओनली रिकॉर्डिंग्स ट्राई टू अटेंड दीज सेशंस लाइव बिकॉज आई हैव ऑलरेडी रिसीव्ड ट्वेंटी थर्टी स्टूडेंट रिक्वेस्ट सेइंग दैट सर वी वुड लाइक टू एनरोल बट वी वॉन्ट रिकॉर्डिंग्स बिकॉज मे बी द टाइम पीरियड इज नॉट मैचिंग विद देयर रेगुलर वे ऑफ लर्निंग or maybe they want to do it in the leisure hours or at late night they want to do it in a 1x or 2x fashion speed fa- uh, in a uh, little bit of speed so if you want to do that kind of revision i think uh, i'm here to help but not at the cost of not watching videos at all because sometimes what happens if you don't attend live uh, there are less chances that you might finish all the revision sessions right so i am going to give you recordings but only for 7 days period okay not beyond that only for 7 days and one more request was about notes see notes part if you're part of upsc medco or if you have already made your notes that that is more than enough now if you start making your own notes or reading my notes what happens is that will put unnecessary confusion into your brain if you believe that one of the slide which i'm going to show in the a uh, zoom session do you if you believe that that slide or that content is better than your content then you take a screenshot i am not giving going to give you the pptr notes for two reasons one thing is uh, at this short span of time you don't have time to improvise or work upon the improvements because it's only for revision not improvement so in that sense if i give you notes that will put unnecessary burden on your brain you can't inculcate new content now okay you can listen to it you can memorize it you can by heart it but you can't learn new content unless you feel that this is absolutely essential don't read this latest notes which i am going to discuss only and only stick to your notes for revision okay so that's the reason i am not going to give you any notes or ppt of these sessions right so these are the few things the students have asked and one more question was how much percentage of syllabus i am going to complete it is not depending on percentage i'll post some of the demos now so this orientation video also contains one demo session of biochemistry i'll also be posting some anatomy and also some clinical demo along with psm demo if you go through those demo sessions then you'll understand what kind of revision i'm going to do it will be more in an integrated fashion we won't be starting with a topic and discussing it we'll be clubbing multiple topics or subjects are together to discuss further right so these are the thing so the end result what i'm what is my focus beyond these revision sessions is uh, first and foremost we'll be focusing more on the presentation how to present and uh, how to draw the images part mainly in the anatomy and pathology sections and also how to give an introduction and conclusion i'll give you those points also and also we'll discuss uh, at least 100 clinical vignettes based on the clinical cases so that sometimes even though you have good content if you don't know the diagnosis you end up giving wrong diagnosis you end up giving wrong investigations and you end up giving a wrong management algorithm so when i say management algorithm most of the time students are struggling to write answer in a flow chart or an algorithmic approach there most of the times in the test series i could say they are giving point wise fashion so when we discuss some of the important topics we'll be focusing on the algorithmic based approach and also dd based approach what is the differential diagnosis and how to rule out and also major focus is on predictive previous year questions and topics il topics for revision and uh, when i say based on prediction there are some students who are continuously asking we want some high yield topics 110 high yield topics have already been posted in the upsc medico website and on top of that the whole test series of upsc medico is designed keeping in view both unasked topics and also predictive topics so if you are part of the test series involuntarily or unknowingly we have covered most of the important topics in the test series now this learning uh, is fast paced let's say you are starting for 2026 okay you are just a beginner okay you haven't done at least half of the syllabus so don't join these classes because these will be so fast paced that you can't keep track of them so these classes are ideal for people who are targeting 2025 and done with their preparation and more suitable are gold standard for 2024 attempt students who are going for mains this year 
okay unless and until you have one done medical science one reading or more than 50% of reading don't attend these sessions because this might cause confusion to you and one more question students were asking is is it a separate course yes it is not part of any of the upsc medico course it is out of my own interest i'm taking uh, like it takes around 20 days to prepare content and 5 to 6 days to give you that content so overall i am spending one month of my precious time to give you a proper revision thing so it is not part of the any of the course it's only an add on if you want to enroll into it i think you have to pay the stipulated amount and be a part of it and from my end my guarantee is that this is going to give you that plus 20 marks which will push you into the golden zone and also it is like a rapid way of finishing of the revision for you okay so these are the things and also as i said the approach is most in an integrated way and we'll try to cover medical statistics uh, like uh, uh, recent updates from icmr and also uh, national family health survey data and who data and also problem statements of most of the psm and cancers will cover and also i'll give you details about the latest updates in psm from national health programs and there will be special focused on unasked version from subjects from each subject so these are the focus points for our discussion so orientation part is done now let's move to uh, i'll this is demo lecture of a revision this is how i want to do uh, the revision for the future uh, batches so i'll be posting this in the youtube and i'll share you the link to all the aspirants so my sincere uh, request is go through this demo lecture and give me an advice like for example if you're giving exam in this mains uh, after watching this video if you feel like there should be something that should be added in the revision or if you feel like it is taking more time or it is lagging whatever it is give us a genuine uh, feedback through my direct contact or a youtube comment uh, based on that i will kind of Uh, restructure my content so that by the time we start with classes on 23rd uh, of the end of this month i think th the content is like designed in a most efficient way in a two way fashion not one way from dr navin it is a two way fashion with your input also i'll put your input into it so that i make it more high yield for you right so we're starting with biochemistry so when it's a biochemistry there are four topics four uh, as uh, within a sub uh, subject there are four topics one is protein synthesis okay other is vitamins and minerals vitamins and minerals other is organ function test and the fourth thing is the tools of biochemistry there are three tools of biochemistry one is restriction fragment length polymorphism pcr radio immunoassay the fourth thing is actually a forensic medicine topic dna fingerprinting they are asking lot of questions on dna fingerprinting principles and stuff so dna fingerprinting is an indirect question wherein because uh, there was uh, a rape case happened around in 1980 they wanted to catch the suspect right they used rflp technique based on that they matched dna sample at the crime scene with the dna uh, sample of the suspect okay that's how the case is solved so this is the origin of dna fingerprinting so dna fingerprinting is not a separate entity dna fingerprinting uses reflex in the past pcr now because pcr is more sensitive less sample is required sophisticated yes it is costly yes there is risk of contamination but even in a decomposed sample also pcr yields better dna analysis than reflex otherwise both reflex and pcr are part of dna fingerprinting so forensic medicine part is done so if you read these three topics you can apply this knowledge in the forensic medicine part integration that is dna fingerprinting if they ask you what is the principle of dna fingerprinting and also surprisingly the inventor of reflex that is alex jeffrey is the same one who invented dna fingerprinting because reflex was the first technique which is used for dna fingerprinting right so what kind of questions are asking in reflip pcr or radium na say this tools of biochemistry they are asking three things one what is the principle the other is steps and what are the applications principle steps and applications there is one more area i had seen lot of questions coming that is variants of special focus on variants of pcr with covid in 2020 you might know what is reverse transcriptase pcr or rt pcr which is done more common and also what is real time pcr what is its advantage there are new things which can be asked like unasked version nested pcr and inverse pcr we try to cover in the regular course apart from that multiplex pcr hot start pcr are trending nowadays but i don't want you to focus more on these things but at least nested pcr and inverse pcr can be asked can be asked in the exam now when you see nested pcr nested pcr instead of using one pc one primer in uh, pcr we use two pairs of primers and also uh, nested pcr 
uh, and also inverse PCR is a mix of reflips plus PCR because in inverse PCR we first use restriction fragment polymorphism we create a new DNA spherical DNA or circular DNA then we apply specific reflip then we do that investigation generate a linear DNA followed by PCR so it is inverse PCR whatever is it the first thing is to write introduction to these questions that is radio immune assay or PCR or reflips or DNA fingerprinting if you want to write introduction you have to start with an inventor and I could see most of the students are not giving proper introduction to these questions so if they ask you what is radio immune assay you have to say that it is invented by Solomon Burson and Rosalind Yalo in 1959 and they were awarded Nobel Prize in 1997 please memorize it because you could see in 2019 they asked a question in 1997 Rosalind Yalo was awarded Nobel Prize in Medicine for inverting an important technique which was considered a breakthrough in endocrinology what is this technique describe briefly the principle behind this technique even if you know PCR if you do not know that PCR is invented by Caribe Mullis in 1980 and Nobel Prize was got in 1993 if they ask you what are the steps and principles of a technique which is invented by Caribe Mullis in 1980 for which he was awarded Nobel Prize in 1993 if you don't know Caribe Mullis was the inventor of PCR you will not get the twin marks right so these are the three scientists which you should memorize Caribe Mullis for PCR Alec Jeffrey for reflip and fingerprinting so your introduction is done for these questions and one more area people are struggling is the applications part because three of these methods have similar applications if you take reflip and PCR we're not doing reflip now because reflip has a lot of disadvantages PCR has only one disadvantage what is that PCR has only one disadvantage that is there is risk of DNA sample contamination because this test is so sensitive so sensitive there is risk of contamination apart from that the applications are similar applications are similar but when you write answer for these questions you have to highlight the major application reflip was used for mainly forensic identification for DNA fingerprinting technique and also mainly paternity dispute solving so focus more in the lines of genomic sampling or genomic sequence identification or species identification reflip has more involvement in identification of a genome not multiplication of a genome or making million copies of DNA or diagnosis of disease so PCR is mainly used for diagnosis of disease the COVID-19 we used it right RT-PCR for quicker results very faster results even with simple sample you can identify any genetic disease or any infectious disease or a cancer whatever it is you can use PCR for that PCR has like millions of applications but major focus is human diseases not genomic studies or not epidemiological studies or not crime scene solving and all yes we do PCR nowadays though it is costly but reflip was invented for forensic identification and paternity testing so you need this distinction while mentioning the uh, applications but on top of that let me tell you reflip and PCR both are DNA fingerprinting techniques both have almost similar applications but PCR has more advantages than reflip you have to highlight this point RIA radium assay is entirely a different one it is highly sensitive it can detect even small quantities of biological fluids like TSH ACTH enzymes hormones in the body and also drug levels therapeutic drug monitoring you take lithium lithium is toxic if it exceeds the therapeutic drug levels right so to detect that we do radium assay study see PCR and RIA has come recently from 2020 21 22 23 it's got repeated so if you want to choose one topic which is pretty which is expected because is reflip because long back in 2019 they asked reflip it was not repeated so they might ask you this time what are the steps principles and therapeutic uses of reflip when I say principles and steps students are getting confused principle is different steps are different steps you know the multiple steps you need to revise but principal part PCR the principle is enzymatic replication of DNA we use DNA polymerase to replicate one DNA into million copies of DNA that is PCR so how it is done we have denaturation annealing renaturation so these are the steps don't write denaturation annealing renaturation in the principal part similar radio say yes there are three important principles one which is based on immune reaction second is competitive displacement reaction and other is radio emission reflip also the principle is we use restriction digest principle we use an enzyme called restriction enzyme to break the DNA into multiple copies of different length so you compare this different length with something that to identify or differentiate a species that's it so this is the principle of reflip so with this simple discussion we're done the whole crux of the topic how to start an introduction and how to differentiate applications of different topics and why name of the scientist is important to identify a particular 
question what is the body of the question and uh, the unasked version they might ask you nested pcr or inverse pcr which are variants of pcr apart from that i don't think you will be getting any surprise or bouncer question from this particular topic